Welcome to Integrity Inspire, your daily dose of inspiration and motivation, featuring the bright and talented members of the Integrity Marketing Group family. Now, here's your host, Integrity co-founder and CEO, Brian W. Adams. Well, hello, everybody. This is Brian Adams. Thank you so much for joining today's Inspire podcast. And I tell you, man, this has been such a busy summer here at Integrity with all the amazing partners that we've added. And it has been remarkable. As you've seen really about some of the latest additions that we've had with PHP, with Patrick Bet David coming on board recently. I'm speaking at his conference this weekend in Vegas. 15,000 people, 15,000 advisors and agents that are going to be there. The reason there's not more is because that's the maximum you can hold at the MGM Grand where that's going to be located. 15,000 people, like, I mean, I don't know if I've ever been in front of 15,000 people, so it's going to be super exciting. But then we added a Nexus group recently, and now with last week's huge monumental announcement of Gladstone joining the Integrity family, we are just doing some incredible things. And Here at Integrity, we've been focused on building this platform really about life, health, and wealth, and holistically serving Americans with all their planning needs when it comes to life, health, and wealth. And we also are really focused on how do we do that for all of our employees, our associates here at Integrity. And we're in the middle of what we call the wellness warm-up. And this week, we're focused on financial well-being, which really fits in very well with our life, health, and wealth. And I love having conversations around this about how do we think longer term? How do we think longer term about investing? How do we think longer term about saving for retirement, things of that nature? When when I was in my early 20s, my first ever real job, I remember setting into an employee orientation meeting. They started talking about their 401k plans. In fact, I don't know if I'd ever heard of a 401k whenever I was in that meeting. I remember this investor talking about the power of compounding interest and the fact that if you start saving a little today, it can be worth a lot in the future. And I really caught on to that passion about really thinking longer term, not trying to make short-term decisions, but really longer term thoughts around big outcomes. And one of the things I'm really excited is this Wednesday at 11 a.m. Central, we're going to be hosting a special panel to learn more about the Integrity 401k benefits with myself, Rochelle McReynolds, our head of people and culture, and also our benefits manager, Ms. Tabitha Pittman. And by the way, Rochelle and Tabitha are two of the most fun people we got here at Integrity. So you're going to learn a lot from them. So you're all going to be receiving a calendar invite along with the login details for the 401k plan discussion. And I hope that every one of you can be able to join us for that. I'm going to share on that. I think I'm going to share a little bit more about my story about that first 401k encounter. The 401k plan is a plan that we match your contributions. It's one of the largest investments we make here at Integrity. I, I truly believe it's an investment. If you think about what we match for you, for your 401k plan, what we give every employee for the employee ownership plan is really about this passion. I know Tom and Mike and I had when we first got started with this idea that we want to build an amazing world-class business that's also about giving back. And also that one day, whenever every one of us retires at some stage in, in our careers, I want everybody to look back and say, man, I worked for a great company. They had great 401k plans. They had great employee ownership plan, stock ownership. And it was a great place to work focused on core values and culture. And this is part of that. And I can tell you the power of compound interest. I'll just tell you my story and I'll give you my exact numbers on that. And so please jump in on that call again, Wednesday at 11 central, because this is some deeply passionate that I believe in. And I, I hope that every one of you see the benefit of what we're contributing here at Integrity and the opportunity you have to think about long-term, how do you save a little today and have it become worth a lot in the future? We're also excited to welcome another incredible partner here to the Integrity family. And I'm incredibly excited about this one. One of the things that we've seen here at Integrity 
is this opportunity to bring in so many like-minded individuals that are excited about growing their business and really believe that they're in the second inning of their business. They believe that they're just getting started, just like we believe here at Integrity. I truly believe that we haven't accomplished all that much just yet. I was talking to Rick Frick, the CEO of Gladstone, last night. He said, listen, I'm more excited right now than I've ever have been in my career. And whenever you hear people like that and Ron Schertz and others, they're saying the same thing. You know you're on to something special. And I'm incredibly excited to announce that tomorrow we'll be announcing the Richmond Insurance Agency has joined the Integrity family. And as part of that, this amazingly dynamic leader, a guy named Rob Richmond, the owner of Richmond Insurance Agency, will become a managing partner here at Integrity. And Richmond is truly a buddy star in our industry. They have been bringing together an amazing group of individuals, and they have an incredible track record for training agents and excellent customer service. And Rob and his team have grown really quickly and professionally and have a really strong presence here in my home state of Texas, and certainly beyond that as well. Rob is a bold leader, which I love, and he challenges his team to strive for greatness, to build something world-class in everything that they're doing, and to work really hard to reach their goals. And as part of that, it's truly dedicated to building a great organization based on one of our core values, which is service. And he believes that service depends on truly caring for people and making sure that they get the financial protection that they need. And as a new partner in the Integrity family, Richmond will be able to boost their agent recruitment, mentorships, a service with a lot of our technology resources and support and products so that they can even serve more people. And so on behalf of all of the partners here at Integrity and all of our thousands of employee owners, I want to welcome Rob Richmond to the Inspire Podcast and be the first to welcome him to the Integrity family. Rob, congratulations, buddy. We've been waiting on this day for a while and super excited to finally be here. Well, man, good morning, everybody. And Brian, thank you so much. I, I couldn't be more humbled really to be on this call this morning. This is just the beginning of our relationship, but I'll tell you what, Sean Mike really has this ability to help you put yourself into the most exciting and humbling positions. And I couldn't be more excited to be joining the Integrity family and and what that means for our future. You know, we believe that the Richmond Insurance Agency is that really no matter what adversity you face, you've got to find a way to overcome it. You know, and our journey here has not always been easy, but man, are we a hardworking group of people. And today's a milestone in letting us know that all of that hard work was truly worth it. And just in listening to us, the introduction on my call today, I couldn't be more humbled. I mean, my gosh, you brought together a conglomerate of titans in this industry. And I just feel like it's a huge privilege and a massive opportunity to learn from the best and to be part of something bigger than ourselves. And I truly believe that we're just scratching the surface on this thing and what our business is going to really blossom into. And, you know, really, Brian, with, with integrity, these next few years, I believe is going to feel like just a massive incubator. We can not only focus on getting better and better, but growing stronger than ever. Man, I couldn't agree more. Listen, we're honored to have you and honored to have so many great partners that have chosen to join the Integrity family. And it's exciting to have you on board. You and your your team are just great models. You said this earlier about how hardworking you guys are. You guys are such great role models of saying, look, I I remember meeting you the first time in, in our lobby here at the Integrity office here in Dallas. I remember saying, look, I'm going to become one of your partners one day. And you're like, nobody's going to outwork me. And your dedication to hard work, serving people is so contagious. And I think that's one of the things that we found with a lot of our integrity partners is that every one of us work harder as partners because we don't want to let the other one down, right? I don't want to let you down. I don't want to let Sean down. I don't want to let Tim Mash down, Tom Chief down, all the other partners. I want to make sure that we make them proud and that we want to work hard to help continue to grow. And integrity is all about serving people with their life, health, and wealth protection needs and making sure that we're there for them when they need us most. And I love your passion about serving others. And I know we're going to do great things together. Now, one of the things that I love about this podcast is hearing about the backgrounds of our partners and where you came from and what kind of motivates you on this journey and kind of the business that we're in today. I'd love to hear a little bit more about your background and kind of how you got started. Well, you know, I think, you know, the hard work piece of this, 
really comes from hating mediocrity. You know, I was raised by a great family in Northwest and Northeast Ohio, right outside of Cleveland. But I found out at a very young age that, you know, not only in just in life, but in, you know, just in anything, having a stick to itiveness mindset and just never giving up was huge. And that's what took me from maybe even below average in certain things to just being good. And growing up, I was always like, I was naturally talented to make the team, to take the snap, take the shot. And I always wanted that. And the coach knew it, but I was never a rock star. You know, and, and over the years, I just never wanted to settle in mediocrity. And I believe that, you know, my time was better spent developing the skills that I did have and leveraging the things I did well. And 11 years ago, the insurance industry, the business, it really changed all that for me and gave me an opportunity to reach for the stars. And, you know, I finally got my shot to be on an all-star team with this group. Man, that's awesome. So you grew up in Ohio. How did you come to Texas? I was married once before, and we were living together in, in a suburb of Cleveland, and she went down for a business trip in Dallas, and she came home and said, man, I never thought I'd say this, but she had a big family business, and she said, hey, if this is there's one city we can get to, let's give it a go, and coincidentally, one of the guys I worked with at a previous position was opening up a life insurance agency and gave me a call literally like 24 hours later said, hey, I got an opportunity for you to move down to Dallas. I know, you know, with the family situation you got up there, it's going to be hard. But if you want to come down and run it, you know, you got the job. The stars aligned. And, and that's how I landed in Dallas. Man, that is so awesome. You know, look, I think it's important to hear people's stories, where they came from, especially when people take those shots, take those opportunities, but also refuse to settle. I think a lot of times we get really comfortable just kind of where we are. And one of the things that I've found with really all of these examples with our partners across the integrity platform are people who persevere. And that's like a admirable virtue to push through and overcome, you know, obstacles. I mean, I'd love for you to tell us more about how you kind of pushed through and also got into this industry. Well, you know, I got into this industry almost by mistake. Growing up, I, I wanted to be a financial advisor. Be a financial all did, I we, all did, bro. we We all did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, uh, and I did it. <laughs> what I didn't know in the beginning was being a stockbroker was just a glorified cold caller with a $25,000 a year salary. And in 2008, that was a tough time to get into the business. And that's exactly the year. It was June, right after I graduated, got in, took a job as a junior partner. And for 18 months, I was just banging the white pages. And so I thought those were leads. Long story short, I found myself unemployed, working in an Italian restaurant, busting tables, truly, getting a big promotion to being a server. And there was always this guy that was there that had nice shoes and a nice watch and was always smiling. He started to be a regular there and told me he was in life insurance, thought I'd be really good at it. And he gave me a shot and I bounced around to a couple of different companies. But one thing that I've always described myself as, and this, this has a, hear me out. I call it the cockroach mentality because I'm impossible to kill. It doesn't matter what's happening, what's coming my way with leads. If I got to move, what I got to do, I always, I can always survive. And it's always funny to hear that come out of my mouth because it sounds so gross, but being impossible to kill and always moving forward has really served me well. Wow. Look, I, I think the survivor mentality, right? That it's, look, I'm just going to, I'm just going to survive no matter what it takes. I'm going to thrive in areas that, that others might not be able to. Man, those stories always inspire me. If you read like Marcus Luttrell, Lone Survivor, and some of these stories that just say, look, I'm just going to, I'm just going to make it through it. You know, there's just something about being able to say like, I'm going to be somebody and I'm going to, I'm going to make this count in so many ways, in so many different areas. But now you said something about being in the restaurant business. I remember mm -hmm. when, dude, I remember starting out with integrity and look, if Tom and Mike were on the phone, they, they could tell you all about this. Man, our early days were lean bro. Like, I mean, I was borrowing money to live. I was trying to get by. And I remember I waited tables in college, a place in Lubbock, Texas called El Chico's. Honestly, it was, it was not very much fun, but there was an El Chico's by my house here in Dallas whenever I moved here. And I remember thinking, man, if I don't make it, I know we're going to make it one day, but if I, if I need to do something, I can go to El Chico's and I can still wait tables. Cause I, I still need, <laughs> even it's been 20 years or something or 15 years or something, but I was like, I, I can make this, I can make this work. And but I may have to, I may have to bridge a gap there. And, but I, I, I just remember like, I'm just going to do anything to kind of keep pushing through, which I think that's what you're talking about here. 
of saying, look, I'm gonna, I'm not only gonna survive, I'm gonna thrive. I just may need to keep pushing through and get to that. You know, a lot of us just getting to the next step, right? Just focus on the next step. Don't focus on a hundred steps from here, focus on the next step. And I, I understand you're quite the chef as well, which being a chef is kind of like that, right? You got to focus on the, the next part of the ingredients. If you focus on throwing them all in at one time, it's not going to work, right? Now, tell us a little bit about uh, your cooking skills, man. So this is funny. I got a big smile on my face right now talking about this because I, I, I <laughs> first of all, I, I started cooking really young. And it's a funny story. I remember living in, with I was, I was four years old, obviously, I was living with my parents and I was down in their room. And there's this cooking show that comes on and it's this old guy and he tells these bad chicken jokes. And it, it, he's like, this is before there's like the cooking network. Some of you have even seen this. It was on like six o'clock in the morning. Like I'm very basic cable. And backstory is my grandmother, God rest her soul, was the world's worst cook in the world. She was just the worst. And she made disgusting spaghetti. It was the nastiest thing in the world. I don't even know how you can mess up spaghetti. But this guy on this cooking show, so I'm four or five years old, I'm watching it. I call my grandma and I'm like, hey, Grammy, I think I got something that'll make your spaghetti taste good. And it was the funniest thing. And since then, since I was five years old, I'm 36 now. It's always been my passion. And it's been a stress reliever for me and a way for me to show my appreciation and, and love to my friends and family. And rather than going out to eat, I always thought my stepdad kind of instilled this in me. He was a really good cook, too. Like, why am I going to go pay $80 at a restaurant when I can make a $200 meal at home for 40 bucks? And I always <laughs> just loved going. You know, I'd love going to the grocery store, finding the best, most like vibrant looking ingredients and throwing stuff together and hoping it, it turned out really well. And 30 years later, I just, you know, I, I just love it. I do it, could do it in my sleep. And, you know, my, my house is always the gathering place for my friends and family. Even the first time I met Mark Mead, actually. It's funny. He'll remember this. He'll be laughing. I used to joke with Tasha, his assistant, about picking him up and rolling out the red carpet. And I'm like, I can't just go get this guy a sandwich at Subway. Like, so like the night before, I make all these meatballs and I bring them and I put them in a in a thing. And I don't look like I'd be a cook. I, I don't like necessarily. I don't know. You really I, don't. I, I, yeah, you don't. But, yeah. <laughs> but it's my favorite thing in the world to do. <laughs> and I bring him this container of meatballs. He goes, bro, what is this? I'm like, just eat it. I think you'll like it. And he's like, you made this? Like, what is it? So it's always kind of, it's always been a thing with us now. He'd call me at eight o'clock at night when I was in the field and I'd always be cooking, just burning the stress off for the day. And it's just turned into a thing rather than going to a therapist, which I think I probably could also benefit from. I love working in the kitchen and it's, it's, it's always been my passion and I absolutely adore it. That is awesome, man. Well, one of the things I love about these videos that we put out is the fact that we get to see people kind of in their setting. When what and you know, we, we let people and do whatever you want and we'll try to, you know, accommodate the, the video kind of vision that you have. And yours is you and your wife cooking in your home. It looks amazing by the way. And the <laughs> the sauce and everything that you guys were making just looked spectacular. But I gotta tell you, man, to stick with the cooking analogy. The ingredients I think that we're putting together here at Integrity is truly exciting for us to be able to, to put in some of this here, put in some of that there. And if you think about all the incredible companies that are now coming together and what we can create from here is super exciting. So I can't express how excited I am to have you on the team. Speaking of Mark Mead, we've got Mark on, and I'd love him to tell us just how good those meatballs are, man. <laughs> What a segue. Thanks, Brian, for having me on. Rob, congratulations to you and Rena. What an awesome feat for you guys. I met Rob close to three years ago. And, you know, it was always a vision of mine that, to have an agency in Dallas, with it being such an emerging market and obviously what it's done in the United States of America over the last, you know, five years or so. It's, it's, just, it's just so explosive. You know, Sean can attest to this, but we used to have this thing where we locked out counties for mortgage protection leads. And I'd have like half of Texas locked out, like waiting for the agents to arrive. And it was bleeding me. But the vision was, you know, to get some of these big markets, you know, to have some presence. And I was doing that for years before I met Rob. And when I met Rob, I knew who he was, who he said he was. I looked him in the eye and I said, I've been looking for you my whole life. <laughs> 
And he's every bit of that. And, you know, he went out there and completely crushed it. I mean, crushed it. Took his work ethic to very high level when he started here and just produced a boatload of insurance, helped a lot of families and built an agency. It's just amazing to see what he's done in a very, very short period of time. Um, and I'm happy for you, bro. I'm excited for, for what you got going on with what's next for you with integrity and everything that you have planned in the, in the coming months. You know, I look at, you know, you and Rainy, you guys are absolutely crushing life. So, you know, keep doing what you're doing and keep inspiring, keep impacting, keep serving families, man. Love you, brother. Love you too, Mark. Thanks so much for those kind words. Got a lump in my throat, man. I remember that dinner. I, it's unforgettable. I appreciate you saying that, Mark. It means a lot. That's awesome, Absolutely. man. Hey, we also we also have Sean Mike on. Sean, man, these are exciting times for the Integrity family. And getting Rob and the team here is another exciting moment. Man. Yeah, man. Well, first of all, Brian, thanks for letting me get on. And yeah, I'm very excited what's going on. Somebody asked me the other day, how excited are you? I said, beyond excited. I only understand half of what's going on. Could you imagine if I understood the rest of it? But I really don't care. I just know how excited I am about what y'all got going on, what we have going on and what's happening. So Mine's a little anticlimactic because Rob has never cooked for me, nor did I ever look him in the eyes and say I was looking for him for my whole life. So I don't really have that, <laughs> but, but I'm a Subway sandwich kind of guy. First of all, Rob, congratulations to you and your wife. You know, Rob's somebody, Brian, that is really hard on himself. And I think I see that a lot in, in people that, that are independent. You know, he's not one of those guys that you have to kind of bring him back. It's not like you're trying to get him to understand, like, Rob knows when the situation is bad. Rob knows when he needs to change. And Rob is really, really hard on himself, which I can understand because we share that, you know, and watching him just evolve. Rob's also probably, if you took all the people that work in integrity and we lined everybody up and said, hey, man, let's let's like have a, a hurrah and go sell a bunch of life insurance and see who can sell the most. I mean, I'm not, my money's on me first, but my money's always on me. I love y'all. If it's putting people in a convention, my money's on Patrick Bet David. But if it's selling insurance, my money's on me. But Rob Richmond's right there, and so is Mark Mead, you know. But, I, you know, Rob, I think one of the things you have to understand is, you know, when you started off the call, Brian, I just thought, man, you know, PHP's got 15,000 people in an event. You know, we had probably somewhere around 12,000. I'm just like, I love that integrity keeps raising the bar, you know, and there's things that, Rob, you're going to now, you know, have access to on the life insurance side from staffing some technology, to, even though you you're with FFL, we've been with FFL, you know, now you're, you know, your full fledged integrity partner. And, and I think all I would say is, you know, Brian, I do believe Rob's going to be even harder on himself, which I think is okay in some ways, but he's not going to let the team down. He's not going to let the family down. He's just not. And I think he's in a great place with his business as far as what he's looking to do. And I think that Mark's right. Mark was, Mark and I would, we have very, very interesting discussions about Mark's overzealousness to take over the world. And I tried to explain to him that Texas is a lot bigger than New Jersey. And when you decide to lock down the entire state, that's a problem. Like, that's a big state. Believe, but his baby. overzealous. What's that? Believe. Believe. Yeah, man, he, he had it, dude. And, and he's right, though. Had he not done that, he wouldn't have found Rob. Had he not done that, Rob wouldn't have found us. And had he not done that, we wouldn't be on the call today doing this. I mean, God knows who'd be doing what. So it was it, belief and courage, you know, and, and Rob's got that too. But if it weren't for Mark's courage, I don't think we're on this call. Rob, I love you. You know, we ain't cooked together. But, like, Rob is like the guy that, like, I, I can remember playing football with. You want him, he, he's, he's going 100 miles an hour, and you just want to grab his face mask and be like, dude, like, we just need to hit the people on our team. Like hit the people, you're on our team, hit the people on the other team. Like you keep hitting the people on our team too, as you run into everybody else and the kicker and the punter, like just let's, let's slow down. But I take that Brian a hundred percent of the time mm -hmm. over trying to get somebody up off of their butt to go do something. So Rob, welcome man. Well-deserved Brian. I appreciate you. Every time we do these things, everybody's story is different. Every relationship we have with everybody that works here is different. I mean, every time I think it'll be eventually I'll get used to it, but I don't. It's really, really, really humbling. And, you know, sitting there with my daughter last night and she was, you know, she, she thinks she knows I love her, but she's like, I got, you know, I'm going through some stuff numbers wise. She's like, what about this person? And I realized like, she knows just about everybody that came out like at the company. She's like, how about this guy? How's he doing? Then I'm like, I need to do this meeting. She's like, why don't you have so-and-so call him or call her? 
And mm-hmm. I just looked at her and she goes, isn't it really cool that all these people, y'all are like, this is her. I mean, she, she's at LMU, dude. She, what does she know about insurance? I don't know. She knows that it ain't so bad. I can afford to pay for her to go to LMU about what she knows. But the way she's talking about everybody and she's like, look at where people were. She knows Andrew Taylor working at a grocery store, dating Nicole, who was his administrative assistant, living in their tiny little place in Victorville, California, sharing a car. She knows that guy. And then she knows the guy now, the father of two, married to Nicole, and money an issue. So I don't know, man. I just kind of was reflecting last night about all this. And one thing I am mad at you for, Brian, is I've, I've had tears in my eyes more than three years than I did my previous 46. And I don't think I cried when I was a baby. <laughs> but um, I love you for it. Rob, I love you. Mark, you know how much I love you, bro. And these are two guys that, you know, we've loved each other a lot. We fought a lot, you know, and I like that. Like we go outside, we blood each other up and put our arms around each other and go back inside and figure out how to take over the world. So welcome to the team, Rob. Well, Sean, thank you for that. And I will tell you, you've done an unbelievable job of planting a seed of greatness down inside me that I didn't know existed. And, and I told you this before, the way you water it, it's a weird way that you water it, but it works. And I stopped questioning anything that you ever asked me to do about two years ago. And it's worked really, really well, man. And I just want to tell you, thank you so much. And, and I take everything that you tell me and I implement and I don't ask follow-up questions. And thank you for that. And I look forward for Brian being able to do the same thing with, with me and my business as well. So I'm just humbled and excited to be here. Wow. That is super exciting. Listen, we've got so much opportunity. It's really, it's on us to take advantage of this opportunity now with all the incredible things. We've got all the resources, we've got all the support, we've got all the technology and, and products we need. It's now like, what can we do from here? And with great young leaders like Rob and the entire Richmond Insurance Agency, I, I have no doubt we're going to make something really special here. So Rob, hey, congratulations, buddy. Super excited to be your partner. Can't wait to see where we go from here. It is exciting what we're creating. So congratulations, my friend. Thank you, Brian. Thank you very much. All right. Well, I hope everybody is as excited as I am for all the things that we're creating here at Integrity. Just all the incredible momentum that we have of incredible leaders, incredible support, incredible team, incredible partners all coming together to serve even more people. We'll be making this announcement tomorrow. Make sure you like and share it out on social media. Hope everybody has a great week. God bless you guys. Take care.